the wax is really strange. It's it's nice because it's really hard when it's not messed about with. You know, the temperature of your hands will soften it. So if you don't touch it, it's actually quite good and rigid and stuff like that. But you, for example, you can't model the hand on there because it'll all the bits around it will start getting soft and so that's why this is on a stick but you know I mean you get the idea it's obviously going to be something like that and it really does take a lot of looking and thinking and I don't work on this scale very often and I this is a first for me with wax too with modeling there's a point at which you're committed that's it it's a done deal because uh, you know it's been cast and that's it and uh, sculpture is kind of strange in that especially if it's a person you're freezing them in an instant I mean all these photos are all different and it's an act of real cruelty to you know capture someone and they look all you know hmm uncomfortable should we say I mean, it's not even about, you know, uh, beauty, beauty or anything like that. It's just about uncomfortable or awkward, you know, to, to trap them forever like that. Ooh. <laughs> it's very easily done, too. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. It's really just, I mean, I don't want to overwork it. Uh, given that the patination on it is going to be rust, it kind of knocks the uh, features back a bit. But um, I did want to try and capture something of the sitter. It's amazing, you know, you take really comprehensive images from all sorts of angles and you imagine that uh, all the information that you require is there. But then when you have the sitter in front of you, uh, you see all sorts of things that you hadn't noticed. You know, you're starting off with a, a lump of clay or a you know, blob of wax and it's got no shape or form of its own and, you know, eventually after a bit of sweat and sort of looking and thinking and, you know, manip manipulation, it's no longer just a blob of clay or, or you know, it's, it's actually got a character and, you know, life of its own. And that's really quite a strange thing and quite a powerful thing too. There is a link between uh, this, the, the patination of Russ, and the clay drawings which appear in the exhibition. Uh, essentially, the red of the uh, clay is, you know, the iron content. I always like to think that there's um, a really big scope in any new process. There's a lot of different opportunities and possibilities. Um, I think that uh, craft, which is central to what I do, it's a bit like a language. Skills, they're like um, developing uh, your vocabulary, if you like. And whilst craft is a means to an end, it's not an end in itself. Uh, I think you do have to have something to say. I mean, sometimes you're so seduced by the material or the process and things like that, you you know you lose sight of that. But um, yeah, I, I think it, it has to be the idea first, and in the final piece, um, how well that idea is realised. Now what I've got here is the spring shape, um, which I just sort of roof, uh, loosely modelled, just a sketch, and then I cut a section of it out, this section here. So what I've done is, uh, I realised that you could get away with just this section, so if you make a beautiful mould, you know, precisionly made, to produce this one module, then this one module goes like that, it actually follows the same curve, the same curve that way because you're just bringing it on. So 
you, you're able to tessellate it, a bit like uh, brickwork, and structurally it's much stronger. The design side of what I do, and particularly something like this, so, it's so labour intensive. It really is, and it, it requires a degree of precision which is unforgiving. It has to be right, and you have to think about how you're going to be able to achieve that. I mean, you could do this easily with uh, computer uh, technology, uh, you know, and a five access milling machine. I couldn't afford it. And uh, I quite enjoy doing, you know, the hands on side of things. It's a metaphor for everything. It's a metaphor for what we are, you know, with the double helix and uh, building blocks of, you know, life. Uh, it's a metaphor for the universe too, you know, all made up of really small, you know, atoms and stardust. Everything you see, everything you touch. The sculpting stuff is quite different to, you know, the labour intensive, quite sort of planned um, design work. But I like the contrast. I like the immediacy of uh, just, you know, mucking about with a bit of clay or plasticine or wax. Uh, I have been asked, uh, is it strange to want to make um, figures along with uh, furniture? And uh, to paraphrase uh, William State Murray, uh, I think he said something like, um, I make a painting one day and I make a pot another day. There's no real difference. Um, well, I don't, I don't really do paintings or pots, but um, you take the point. Choosing between which child you like best, you know, you know, asking a parent. I, I mean, I, I see them essentially as being the same, you know, from the same root. You're excited about experimenting and, uh, you know, pushing uh, the process and seeing how it goes and how well it's going to work for you. Doing things the best way you know how, or devising a method of, uh, you know, having an idea of what you'd like to do and devising a method of the best way you're able to do that is really what it's about. And I, you know, I'd like the viewer to sort of uh, have an inkling of what's involved. Yeah, I mean, it's quite dangerous because I'm a bit, you know, like a butterfly sort of flip from one bright thing to the next. And you can only have a certain amount of space, you can only have a certain amount of equipment, uh, you can only have a certain amount of materials. Even though some of the work it seems really process led, it is about the idea first and foremost. And, you know, a, a sense of experimenting. And hopefully there's a bit of fun there too, you know. The crest, it references um, the idea of prestige and uh, craftsmen, often anonymous craftsmen, who have rendered the raw crest, which hasn't changed for centuries. Um, some of them really quite funny and odd and quirky and some of them really quite beautiful and cool and classical and uh, elegant. Um, it's a way of uh, uh, inferring uh, power and prestige and uh, identity. I've settled upon uh, Charles II simply because uh, here was an example of an uh, English monarch who um, gave uh, the royal charter to the notion of the um, uh, exploits of the slave trade. Yeah, it's really just identifying the fact that at the highest level, uh, this quite unpleasant um, enterprise was um, acknowledged.